Welcome back to Dragon Quest Builders 2! How you doing? How you doing, dude? Quite the vantage point up here. Our cannon is gonna be sitting on top of, or something of the sort. Yes, cannon. We need the orb of heroes. So we've been working on building a Kazapple cannon to destroy the mighty Atlas. And to do that, we need the orb of heroes. Heck yeah! Oh man! Okay, this is actually really cool. And on that note, I actually want to real quick interject and say... I... I, I want to apologize for... Kind of over the course of this whole chapter, coming across as just generally grumpy and hateful. And admittedly, there are a couple things that happen in this chapter that I'm not super fond of, but I don't, I don't even dislike this chapter. I love this game. I love this whole game, this chapter included. I really do. And this, the whole game is absolutely my game of the year of whatever year it came out in. 2019, I think. It's probably my game of the year of 2020, because I'm probably going to be playing it more in 2020 than I do any other game. Like, it's... I love this game so much. And for reasons I'll get into later on when I actually reminisce about the game as a whole. But, I do enjoy this chapter. I do. I think there's a couple things I could have maybe handled a little better, but that's not like... How I was saying before, I hate this can't stand these guys. I don't care about this, I don't care about this, I don't care about this. Like, what it comes down to is this is still my least favorite chapter, but I don't dislike this chapter. It's it's the difference between leaving Crumble Dunn going, man, I love these guys, and leaving this chapter going, eh, these guys are pretty okay, I guess. Like, that's, at the end of the day, that's what it is. And I know I have a tendency to get, like, real grumpy and complainy and whiny, and for that I apologize. I absolutely know I do, and I really shouldn't. I, I should make a stronger effort to avoid it. I, I think some of it is that I, I don't feel like I've explained myself properly, so I feel like I have to re-explain over and over again in order to try to get my point across. But then on top of that, I feel like it's also... I'll explain myself and then like almost forget that I've explained myself when the issue comes up again or when it's addressed again. Like I'll say, hey, this thing is butts. And then like five minutes later, that issue comes up again and I go, hey, remember this issue? It's still butts and I'll explain a second time why. Like... I'm not great at conversation. I'm not great at debate, especially. Um, and over the course of this whole thing. So I feel like I've been... I've come across way harsher than I, act, than I genuinely feel. So for that whole mess, I apologize. Anyway, a war banner, eh? Ah, just straight up gives it to me. I don't even have to craft it. I would very much have expected to have to craft it. Heck yeah! The War Banner! How better to handle a massive army? Look at that thing. Look how old 
big that thing is. Okay, so I got this thing out, so you have to, like, do this. And it summons all the soldiers! There's more coming, I'm sure. They're just a while away. But, like, now we got a whole group of guys around us! And we can run around, and they follow you around! And then I, we need them to just go about their business, and they can keep doing what they were doing. When they change out your weapon for an army. So at least for a little while now, that's gonna be our weapon. Ah. I mean, admittedly, the standard bearer can't fight. And Anessa is going to be way better at actually fighting. Well, that sounds... That sounds kind of poopy. I mean, really, yeah, we're going to war. Malroth would eat this up. Just a st an army of troops going out. There's no traps, there's no building, nothing. Just a whole bunch of troops? Man. I think something else to mention is that I genuinely look forward to recording this every week. Like, e even now, even, like, for all the... for everything that I've said about this chapter, and how it's handled and such, like, I'm still sitting there going, man, I want to record more brothers. Hmm. Sounds a little off-putting. I mean, what people? They're all soldiers. Oh man. New destination, eh? That's not the button I wanted to hit. I I can't hit the button I wanted to hit while I'm... We're going here. Oh, right. Um, before we go out all the way, I'm going to re-equip you real quick, and then I'm going to hop over to you. So I did just a little bit of tidying up around the castle. Not too much. Um, so before we head out, real quick tour, I found a bunch more flagstone. Um, specifically, I scoured the map trying to find who had flagstone, and the only place I found it was right outside, like, over here where the enemy's kind of encampment was. There was probably 100 flagstone, 120 flagstone out there. So I grabbed that, and I flagstoned up this little bit over here. It's all we really needed. So otherwise, that section's done. Also, just tidied up the edges over here. Nothing too fancy. We got our stick. Got our little staircase, so we can go down into the grass. Um, tidied up over here, so this is all done and cleaned up. I didn't really have to do anything here. I made this wall thicker because I felt like for an outside wall of the castle, that wall being one block thick was. Questionable? 
I connected these two little bits here, this little down spot and this down spot, so it extends out now. And I filled in instead of the sand, I put this block in. I also put a door in here, because way more often than not, I found myself running over this way and let going, um, that'll do it, that'll get me over there. So I did that. I don't think I've done much else. That's about all I can think of. Mostly just little, little bits of tidying up here and there. I have sworn there was something else I did. No, that's pretty much it. Not a lot. Just enough. Anyway. Um, so I was going to head... There were two mini metal things over here. So the one to the south was right here. Where we had to clear away some of the blocks on top so snow would fall down and form a slime inside. Let's see if we can not ruin that. So I kind of stood around and... Got it. I kind of stood around and waited for that, but I didn't want to collect the mini metal. But that was that one, and then there was another one up here. A little bit further north was this one. Same deal, waiting for the snow to fall to fill them up. This was a... Cl These were clever puzzles, but I feel like one of them was enough. Having to just kind of stand around waiting twice over was kind of... Eh. I don't know. Anyway, um... Okay, so for like the first time in quite a while, I actually remembered to look at a map of Moonbrook. And yes... I was correct, there is actually an island over here to the west of Moonbrook that has a lighthouse on it. I have, I do not know what its plot significance is. And up here, there is a cave that goes underwater called the Canuck Cave, and that leads to the, if not the continent of Canuck, then the continent that Canuck is on, like Canuck Castle is like right here or something, and the whole continent is like right here. So you remember the end of that cave where we kind of hit that dead end? That's probably about where it would have come up on the other side. Instead, it was just cut off from everything. So that's, uh, you know, a little awkward. Anyway, um, we've still got the well-known things like uh, Moonahan here, all that fun stuff. There is a swamp right here. It's called the Mirror Swamp. Probably has a mirror in it. Oh, uh, it's the mirror. It's where you got the the mirror of Ra, or Ra's mirror, or something of the. I, what was that called? Mirror called? It's, I, I suppose I think that's where you got it, which cleverly is also where we got it. So there's no dock down here, so that this boat is down here is a little funky. Um, right around here, there was a big tower. I'm guessing. The ruins that you see right here that the Duders had made kind of their encampment is what's left of that tower. So anyway, that's that mess. So we were told to head to Renderock. Renderock is kind of a horrible place. It's down here. And in Dragon Quest II, that's where Hargon was. That was Hargon's area. It was the final area of the game. So, yeah, when they describe it as a horrible place that everybody hates, they sure weren't kidding. Okay, I grabbed that so we can get on out of here. So I haven't had the chance to show it off, but um, somebody in the comments mentioned that if you teleport away during a monster attack, the monsters all go away. And it's true! Just like you get the, hey, monsters are showing up! Okay, you got it! Teleport to Moonahan! And uh, like a second or two after you get to Moonahan, it says the monsters have retreated. And then you can teleport back and everything's fine. Like, it's cool. I tried this on the Isle of Awakening, and I don't think it works on the Isle of Awakening. 
But I'm guessing for these islands, it's that they don't keep everything in memory? Especially all the junk that was going on. Like, the nuance of a whole attack, because you don't get attacked while you're away from the castle. And I think they just don't keep all of that in memory, so they don't know who's where, who's attacking what, what's going on in that fight. So if you teleport away, or if you find yourself outside of range during an attack, and, and all the monsters are unloaded, I feel like the game just says, okay, well, we could either remember that you were being attacked and start a new attack when you're done, keep it all in memory, or give the benefit of the doubt to the player, or give the preference to the player, and just despawn them all and they don't have to worry about it. So I feel like the teleporting away is kind of a workaround for a, an issue they had, which is, what do you do with monsters attacking if they're unloaded? But it's a quick way to get out of a fight. So can't show it off, too bad, oh well. So we gotta get going, which means everyone gather together. All right, we don't have Malroth. Where's Zara? Man, I wanna bring Zara along. Why can't I bring Zara along? I wanna bring Zara, okay, well, I guess they're just gonna keep building. Zara is, has always been kind of in charge of the civilians, so that makes sense to me that the civilians are going to stay here, and Zara will keep charge of that. So, away we go! Whole army go! I was going to say whole army away. I don't know why I decided to say whole army go. That was a little awkward. Get him! Oh, also, technically all of these people are in my party. Um, I didn't realize this until somebody in the comments mentioned it. But that means... So many! So many! Man, look at that army of slimes. There we go. Army of dancing girls. Got it. Let's go. Honestly, a whole army of dancing girls would wreck. Look at them, they're not messing around. Can we actually attack? I can attack. What you doing? Sure am. That's where the quest marker tells us to go. That sounds horrible, but we gotta do what we gotta do. So this cave's been here since the start, and you could go in here from the start. Um, the issue is what we're going to encounter in here has also been in here from the start, and that's not really something you can tackle without an army of dancing girls. So we've already seen, but if I attack with it, instead of hitting somebody with it, I mean, I can hit somebody with it, but I don't like one damage. Instead, it buffs all the dudes nearby. So I can, like, buff, and once they're on fire, I think that's as good as they get. So you just... Your job is mostly... As standard bearer is mostly... I to keep everyone on fire. Get them! So these guys are rough. Man, they can fight. They can fight as a dancing girl. Get them! When everybody's grouped up, it goes pretty well. Alright! Now, I think just with me and Malroth, I managed to take out those three. The 
but these guys I just ran from. Get them! Okay, I didn't get these guys. Get them too. Okay, they're doing a pretty good job. I'm just gonna keep... Oh, up, up, up. Nope, nope. Bad me. Make sure they stay buffed. Okay. Wow, yeah, they're going down pretty good as long as you stay on... As long as you stay on keeping everybody buffed. Because the buff does wear down slowly over time. So as you see their... So as you see their glow turn back to yellow instead of on fire. Get this one. Get him, he's almost dead. Yeah! Ooh, get that multi. Alright, one guy left. Yeah, got him. Now, I don't know if... I don't know if I misunderstood what was going on. Misunderstood how the banner worked, or if I was just doing something wrong. But my first time through here, I almost couldn't beat them. It, I, I, it was rough. I think one thing is stay on the banner. I would like buff them and then change to my sword and go hack at them. I think you just want to stay on the banner. Just always stay on the banner. Keep swinging to keep everybody buffed. Even if it looks like they're buffed, maybe like if you change off the banner, the buff goes away. And I like, I don't know. I don't know what I did, but I know it was, it was a hard fight. I had like half the team down and I was just standing here waiting for everybody to recover. I mean, I want to know what Malaroth is doing. He should be here. He'd eat this up. Oh, mighty Malroth, master of destruction. Eh, you know, not much. You thought the Builder was your friend, but she has betrayed you. She has left you to rot in this dungeon. That's not true. And he knows it. Oh, mighty Malroth. Do you still not see the truth? The Builder is an agent of creation, and you are the master of destruction. There can be no harmony between you. Uh, he disagrees, and I feel like, due to being a disembodied voice, probably knows more than we do. Then why is it you cannot build? Why did the mirror that reveals all things true form reflect naught but a void? I mean, good questions. Do not deny the truth. Free yourself from this torture. Destroy, O oh mighty Malroth. 
destroy all around you and embrace your true existence. You are a god, and you may be a god again. Tired of hearing your noise! So I realized I was trying to do that voice, like, just talking real deep. But it just kind of sounded like me talking deep, so I tried to be a little more gravelly that time, hoping it came across a little... A little something something. Man, suddenly surrounded by all these dancing girls. Alright, do you guys like regen HP? How fast does that go? How about if I like buff you up? You regen HP faster if you're buffed? If you're on fire. I don't know why you're all cold. You're all on fire. No, be on fire. So we can see, though, that... This guy's trying to drive a fork between us and Malaroth. And this is something that we've seen already. We knew it was a thing. Get him. We knew it was a thing. This... Spy's gotta be working with him too! Wow, that was quick. Spy's gotta be working with him too! Because that's everything that's been going on. Not only has they... have they... They've been trying to sow... That there's no way... You and Malroth can coexist. You have to, by their... by your very nature, be enemies. And it's just taking everything that's happened and saying, yeah, I mean, see all these things that have happened? You have to be enemies. Get him. Buff everybody up as they run in. Man, these guys, those dragons were rough, but these guys are nothing. There's got to be another good fight, though. Another good, hard fight coming. Everybody be on fire! They think everybody's on fire. And now that they're on fire, the enemies go down early. Just gotta make sure they stay on fire. There we go, look at that noise. Um, so I went out and farmed a lot of marble too, so I kind of have more marble than I know what to do with. I can't look at my inventory right now. Um, but it's good to know, I've seen a couple places just, uh, today, where there was a lot of marble I missed. So for all that marble I missed... Sure can. Let's go in like we're supposed to, though. Freedom. Well, we've probably made it to Renderock, which is supposed to be an icy cold place. Sure doesn't look pretty.
so... Not exactly what I was expecting. Uh, so my first playthrough of this, I completely ruined this for myself. Because... You can just walk right over the icy wall. Like, right over here is where the one uh, thing was. The one um, mini metal shrine. And there wasn't even like a giant mountain you had to climb. You could just kind of keep walking this way. So you keep walking this way and you see this and go, Oh, that's cool. And I explored it all and everything's fine. And when we walked out here, it was like, Oh, this is what we're going after. When I was just the whole chapter going, well, This is a neat looking area. I wonder what this is going to be. And I feel bad because, like, that was supposed to be a, a reveal. And just by virtue of exploring, I kind of ruined it for myself. I do think it's real nice that they let you explore that, though. Maybe if there was just a little more of a barrier in place, I guess. I mean, you could say climbing the wall was a barrier, but... Honestly, from here... There's not even a wall you have to climb. You can just kind of walk up the back and keep walking. So at least by that point, if you just wanted to explore, it's not so bad. So we're heading out there, first and foremost. Blocks up in the sky. What are we playing? Oh, never mind. There we go. The pillars had not loaded. The pillars are probably considered like special blocks, which load much closer than regular blocks do. That's my guess. This whole army just staring at me while I sit on this. So, Renderak. In Dragon Quest II, horrible location. It's where the last boss was. Icy, cold, miserable place. You could only get there through a cave that was hidden from the outside world. So you had to go get a special item in order to even reveal the cave. And the cave actually brought you out, I want to say somewhere like right over there. It was, like, down here somewhere. So, yeah, probably, like, right over there. And this was actually the first location that you came to. It was the last little shrine, your last place to heal and rest and save and pray before moving, your, moving towards the final boss. And a shrine still is here. There are others... I mean, talking trees, I mean, I've hit some trees here and there. I think a pub made from solid gold is just something you've been dreaming up there, dude. So in Dragon Quest II, when you actually got to Hargon's castle, it was... When you first entered, it wasn't... It didn't appear as Hargon's castle. It appeared as... I think it was Middenhall? Middenhall Castle. It was a very familiar place. Middenhall Castle is where you started the game. Um... 
since as the main playable character was the Prince of Middenhall. Well, the first playable character was the Prince of Middenhall. Oh, maybe this is where the cave was. Um, so you go to Middenhall Castle. And, like, why is Middenhall Castle here? That's awkward. So a mini metal shrine. Instead of this cave taking us out to the rest of the continent. Okay, so it looks pretty much the same. We just have to put snow in to complete face. And looks like three here. And that'll do it. And so the kicker was the castle was an illusion. And again, you had to use a specific item in order to break the illusion and see that castle for what it was. So maybe that's what they're talking about. Maybe instead of the castle, maybe this is all an illusion. It would sure make sense. But all this greenery, it doesn't make sense that all this greenery would be about here like this. So, oh, um, wanted, I wanted to speak briefly on the nature of the, the spy, actually. Because my first time playing through this, I pretty much bought into the plot completely. I didn't really know, like, my mentioning, my lack of enjoyment, is something that came from my first playthrough of it. But that was largely... But that doesn't mean as I played through, I didn't still take the plot at face value. Which means, I was thinking about the game, and the developers, and the writers, and what was presented to us, thinking, what would the developers do? Who would the developers make the spot? And... So I ran a lot through my head, and I was convinced the developers are going to make somebody important a spy. It's not just going to be random NPC number four. Oh, holy crap. Is that Atlas? Small to be Atlas. He doesn't... seem aggressive? Oh, no, he's seen us. Well, I mean, yeah. I don't like the cold out there either, but an illusion's an illusion. Maybe it's just people that got tired of the war. So, I was figuring, okay, it's gotta be somebody... Gotta be somebody important. They're not just gonna make it a no-name. And I felt like, given how much they were harping it, there was actually going to be a spy. They weren't gonna just write it off and... Sure is a castle. They weren't going to just write it off as a... A, a... Not necessarily a joke, but as like a lesson, I guess. So, okay. Uh, from the developer's point of view, that's who we got. So who's actually going to be the spy then? If we're thinking about who we got. Now, a lot of people in the comments have po popular theory among the comments is that the king has been the spy. And my first run through, I didn't think that for a second. I'm not sure why. But yeah, I didn't think of the king as being the spy for a second. He always felt to me like someone who was forward enough Okay, so we have to get rid of all this snow in the corner, for starters. I don't know if I can fill those spaces in. 
And then we have to fill this in with... What is going on here? Yellow, pink, white? Yellow, pink, white? Yellow, pink, white? So these aren't right already. Okay, you're not gonna let me put it down there. Whatever. So this is... nope. Pink. Yellow, pink, white. Yellow, pink, white. Yellow, pink, white. And then a bush in the corner. So I need two whites. Got plenty of whites around. But so I was still racking my head about, like, who it was going to be. I felt like if there's going to be a spy, it's going to be somebody we've known for a while. So when, like, Esther and, um, Old Man were introduced later on, I didn't, I didn't contemplate them being it for more than a second. It just didn't make any sense to me that they'd be the spy. Like, the spy would have been around for a lot longer than that. But then who else did we have? We had, um... Like, the, kind of the, just the main characters we had from the start. We had Jerome, Warwick, Anessa, and very early Zara. Yeah, that sure is a castle. So, of them, the spy talk really didn't show up until Zara showed up, so I was kind of thinking, it could be Zara. I could see it being Zara. That, Zara was probably my first thought, really. But then as the, as the chapter went on, there was just so little emphasis on Zara that I kind of went, eh, I don't feel like, just as a character, not necessarily as a potential spy, but as a character, that I felt like, I don't know if they're going to go that route. Because, okay, maybe it'd be surprising, maybe it'd feel like it comes out of nowhere, but it's... It just doesn't feel like there's anything... There's not enough emphasis on her as a character. Could it be Jer Jerome? He was a pretty high thought early on, but I always felt like he was too blunt and honestly not bright enough to be the spy. So, like, at first, eh, that makes sense. But, ah, yeah, he even talks about it. Middenhall Castle. Which, of course, Middenhall Castle was the illusion that was put over top of Hargon's castle. Hey, look at this thing. Cool. Well. I got it. There's a couple more of these around somewhere, so I'm gonna have to look for them. I may not find them right now, I'm kind of just taking a cursory glance around. Um, so who else did we have then? That was mostly down to... Honestly, Anessa and Warwick, and like, Warwick from the start was pretty much your bro, and there's a... especially at this point... Anessa has got kind of a lot of... Kind of a lot of... Oh, there we go. Now we're looking at the castle. Kind of a lot of evidence against Anessa. Like, she wants the fight to keep going, and... I feel like that's... That theory held the most weight, really. That, like, we're, we're closing in on it. That's gonna be it. It makes the most sense, really. As soon as I grab you. Um, so there's the head, the tail, and I'm pretty sure there's a body somewhere. Maybe I'll see it on the way back, because I just gotta run down here, because... You can see that over there is the first guy we talked to. And that seems like about it. So you're mostly just supposed to run this way, straight this way. I just went around the long way, because I knew that mini metal thing was back there. Also gave us a chance just to look around and see what was what. Where's that body? That body's gotta be around here somewhere. Or is it just two pieces? I refuse to believe it's just two pieces. Is it 
that tree? It is! Aha! Okay, there, we got the whole caterpillar. So, Middenhall Castle, eh? So, when you came to Middenhall Castle, it was actually filled with all the NPCs that were there in. When you got to Hargon's Castle, Middenhall Castle, it was actually filled with all the NPCs that were there during the first. Like, the original Middenhall Castle. Everybody was there. But it was. Awkward, let's say. A shop! Probably better if I don't. I'm genuinely curious what happens if I do, though, but I don't know how much I like this place. Hmm. Because, of course, you controlled the Prince of Middenhall. And he's greeting me here like I'm the Prince. And that's the other thing, is all the NPCs actively talked to dissuade you. They talked as though Hargon were a good person. They tried to dissuade you from doing anything against him. I'm actually glad, I'm, I'm sad that I didn't know any of this my first playthrough, but I'm glad I know it now because this whole area means so much more if you actually know a little bit about Dragon Quest too. Can I have good things? Do you have any good things? Probably not. Mind me, just an army passing through. Mm. Yeah, gonna be honest, a lot of weirdos. Um, so Middenhall Castle was actually a pretty simple castle in Dragon Quest 2. So this is... I don't even know if it even vaguely resembles. Like, honestly, it... I don't even want to say it vaguely resembles Middenhall Castle. Like, this is nothing at all like Middenhall Castle. I mean, I'm looking at it upside down, but I guess there's a, there's the vaguest of resemblances. Truly, it fell because it didn't believe in Hargon enough.
priest guy. Alright, so I knew this was down here. Oh! Also somebody over here. That's funny, actually. Placing the goddess above Hargon, but saying that this is then also under Har under the goddesses. That's that's some weird stuff. That's some weird stuff that doesn't make sense. I think that's about it for over here. There's not a lot of castle left. I don't think there's anything downstairs, if you look around down here. Yeah, this does, it has the vaguest of resemblances. To Middenhall Castle, but it is amazingly embellished. Not seeing too much more... I know these, like, kind of go around back. It doesn't look like there's much over here. Yep, that's probably just about it. Which means we've more or less explored the entire castle. Bit of a courtyard up here. This path here loops down and around... So we're kind of behind the throne now. And then this comes up in the courtyard on the other side. Alright, so with everything said... The walls decayed. So you can see the king in there. But until next time, everyone... We've made it to the heart of Middenhall Castle. Only we're not in Middenhall. Until next time, everyone.